We're going to learn about these new things. Pena koto inga iwi e kohene wirangi toku ingwa i te taha o toku faya no kahu gunu ia ia to mau mau kai te manga tapu kodu haka te awa korongo mai wahi ne to tu puna faya e tu ake au i raro i to na koro ai te na ra koto te na ra koto kato a engari i te taha o to ku matua no taura nga moana i a i a ko mau au te manga tapu ko taura nga te moana ko tama te apokai penua taku i tu puna matua e tu ake au i raro i tona koro ai te na ra koto Te na ra koto katoa. We didn't have to talk about my matua whanga i tuatahi. Ara, ko wera mu moga no Ngāti Parau. Te na koutou, te na koutou, te na koutou katoa. I'm going to take you on a journey, and a journey of my song. My song. The journey that I have lived. And I, I wonder, you know, as people that are reconnecting and reconnecting, we're starting at a wrong end. Here it is. This is about you. Where are you reconnecting? People, we have forgotten that at a poor heady we come in a dress. We have forgotten. We need to reconnect with our own cultures. We need to take those rituals back because they are meaningful to us. Our reconnection it's a long way back. Have you got this kind of whakapapa that you see coming up on the screen ready for your mokapuna? You better get it ready on USB stick because that's the way they are. <laughs> Aye. And you, instead of giving them all of these fancy things for Christmas, wouldn't it be lovely if you gave them a way to reconnect to tūpuna all the way back to mai ngā atua? Forget about all those hahi te atuas. They didn't come. They only came with the with the, with the colonizers. Hey? And we need to start to decolonize and walk back into our own place to work and walk with what we know. It's a challenge to you today to look at who are you. This is my mom and my grandma and all the women in my life. The naughty queer. Man, they were naughty, and I'll tell you about them in time to come, but they were fabulous. They left me a rich legacy. I was a rotten, spoiled first mokopuna of the, Marae, of the Mataira clan in Nuhaka. I'm Ngāti Kahunguni on that side, and I stand proudly in it because I was a rotten kid. <laughs> but that rotten kid is what will keep me alive, and you Europeans call it attachment years. Aye, but I just call it rottenness, <laughs> Aye, because that's the way it was. I was loved to bits, and when I used to set them up against each other because I didn't have any of my queer, any of my own age, and these queer used to take me to everywhere, everywhere. and if I cry because one growled me, then the other one will attack the other one. So, you know, <laughs> I really loved that rotten, spoiled attachment years because those are the attachment years. And have you got this down for your mokopuna? Ask yourself, if you want to really connect, this is where you start. You don't start at this drug end and this whatever end. We're busy unpacking. I work in Waikaria Prison. I have spent 20 years unpacking. And it's over here that we needed to work and reconnect. Hey, it's at back this, and I will take you on the journey of that reconnection and show you where I disconnected. Yeah? 
So have we started, look at the woman, look at this beautiful Irish descent, Annie O'Keefe. That's my, that's my other Irish side, and I say hello to you Irish people. I'm from O'Keefe County in the province of Munster. My two brother grew up in Drummond Castle, chair, chair, see? <laughs> I'm an aristocrat. Hey, chair, chair. I mean, I was just born in a house with no power and everything, but I got right back in my beautiful connection years of my Irish side in Drummond Castle. Ooh, can you just see that? That's that, that's that queer. Look at my, my crower, Martin Atukareaho. He was the paramount chief that signed the Treaty of Waitangi, and I often ask him why. Because <laughs> I can, I'm a rotten mogopuna. And this is my other chief, the other great chief, Ihaka Fanga. He's all oh, my queer crower. I have to connect. Are you connecting with yours? This is the question you have to ask. Do you connect 15 generations back and know? so that you can pass that connection on. We're talking at wrong ends, Māori. You know, if you want to connect to your drug world and all of this other world, we have to walk this way first, or maybe this way. <laughs> hey, we have to. Because until we reconnect right back in that whakapapa, where are we? We're lost to a colonised world. So can you give your more opportunities? This is my, my, my helper side. My Scottish side, you know, he was Tamipoto. He was a bloody terrible entrepreneur, and I'm so like him. Hey, he had my, he married my nan, and then he said to her, "Go to sea for six months," and he built her this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful trading post, so she could take care while he was away for six months. But you know, somewhat like 15 years ago, I went to an opening in Manaya of well, my father's parikai up there, and I sat opposite the Kaires, and I looked at them, and I went, oh, you look just like us. I need to find that their kroa was the same time as For the six months, he was going up there having another whānau. How entrepreneur is that? <laughs> and we went, and I bet you he left you a trading post, and we could tell the same story. <laughs> How wonderful was that? Aye, so we can connect. Can you, because all of these people that they come up there, they have a story to tell. The Puraco. Hey, our Puraco don't begin here. Our Puraco begins my Ranginui or my Wainui Ake at Ranginui, and then Ranginui and Papa Tuanuku. And how much of that history and that Puraco do we believe? You see, Pākehā for a long time have been telling us our Puraco are myths. And we believe the myth was to be something like Cinderella. Well, you know, the, the psychologists, they actually work on the Cinderella complex. I couldn't believe it I, when I was doing my research, and that was about Cinderella didn't like to be dependent on anybody else. I, somehow that all worked, but they, were, they said our, our Puraco was myth and legend. In the deconstruction of looking at that, then we have to look at, yeah, really? Myth isn't like that whatsoever. Myth has its basis in history has its basis in stories, has its basis in historical, heroic people, and so did we. So don't, and myth and Puraka for me is my identity. It is who I am. Can we actually connect to that? Let's get real, can we? Hands up that of you that can connect to that, to that kind of time and place. People, it's not enough. We should all be handing up. It's not enough. It's not enough for you to not tell your stories of all these queer. See, Kataraina ko, she started Atarangi Te Reo Māori, using the Katanga. She married my mother's brother. She's my aunt. So she has a big story. And I just take so much pride in the Puraco or the, or the Pakiwaitara of these beautiful people. Where mu pere, we. Where are you? Look at that, so up ta apirananata, like ta mehana jury, you know, ta apirananata was in Mapa, I know too. Hey. And I could talk to you about his work in consolidation and, and, and all of that of the whenua. Here's my family, my little family. I mean, how many, my little family is about, now if, I, if somebody said to me, how many children have you got in here, Wirangi? I go, oh, hang on. I've got 23 
sibling. Mm, I think I've got about 500 children. I think I've got about 800 mōbuna. Probably 500 second mōkubuna. Because that's the way we think. Get out of that individualistic idea and reconnect. We talk about whānau, we romanticise. We're so much romantic us as Māori, we'll get over your romanticism and really get into some work. Hey. See? Now, each one of these whānau have huge stories to tell. What stories have you got for their, your children? And we leave them in such disarray because we don't. We're so interested in the individual, we forget that we're connected to whānau, whānui, to tūpuna, to atua. We forget that whole connection of whānui. And we don't connect. Get real. Half of our babies haven't gone back to our marae ever because the parents don't take them there. If you want to reconnect, reconnect that way. I want to um, have a look at stories of, this is my little whānau, the way that I was brought up with my mum and my dad and my sisters and my brothers. My, I'm an only child. Can you believe that? Mm, just as well as only one. Um, but I actually had, my father and mother left each other and one had 12 and one had 10, 11. Did I count it right? Yeah, that's right. And so there's me and I'm tuakana of these families. And I love that I can be of some teaching. Here's my little family. My mokopuna, that is just a small, look, just a small whānau. And how can you tell their story? Do you tell their story? What kind of legacy do you leave these babies in terms of their connection to who they are, to their identity, to the songs that they need to sing for the rest of their lives? That what kind of song do you sing? Hey, look at my mokopuna, little blondie. This is my son, and he was the little pinky. He stopped me from smoking that one. He made a treaty of Waitangi, a treaty with me on the 6th of February. And they had, he said, Nan, we've got our activity ready. This, this little blondie, we've got our activity ready, Nan, for Waitangi Day. What is that, baby? You, we're going to China treaty. With who? You know, Nan, it's between two sovereign nations. I said, yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, what sovereign nations are? Well, you're... You're sovereign, you're Māori, and we're pinkies. <laughs> what is the first thing? We know you've got three articles, Nan. One, Nan shall stop smoking immediately. <laughs> I've been smoking for 30 years. And I said, yeah. This was February the 4th, actually. And then I go, what's the second one? I said, Nan shall stop eating the guys that kill her. I was 250 kgs. I lost 150 because of those babies and their, and their treaty of Waitangi. <laughs> oh, yeah, that didn't get me, though. That didn't get me. They said to me, what? and I said, so the third is, well, Nan's got five years to try and change what her, what her eating is. I went, oh, thank goodness for that. But that's what not got me, people. They said, you know what, Nen? You know, the Treaty of Waitangi has got a preamble. <laughs> when they talked their preamble through, I wept. My heart wept. Every part of my being wept. And I wanted so much to be what they wanted in the preamble. They just said, we need you to walk with us for as long as you can. There was nothing more than that. And I wanted to walk with them as long as I can. So I signed that treaty, but, but on, the, on the 6th of February, on the 4th of February, I smoked myself stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I did everything. I was sick as a dog. You know, and I knew I, had, I couldn't cope with two addictions, I, but I could cope with one, but they gave me five years. So that was cool. These are those little pinkies. So they had stories to tell. This is my beautiful daughter. I just stole her from my cousin. <laughs> this is my beautiful son. I just stole him from my sister. <laughs> this, is my, this is the other pinky that signed me up to the Treaty of Waitangi. Yeah, look at her. 
Beautiful. Her, that's her when she signed me up when she was that little. Hello? Her name is Sage Henewirangi. I'm Henewirangi Rosemary. Oh, well, we just need a Sage Henewirangi time and then we'll be fine. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, you have a look at our Treaty of Waitangi today. People and how we have signed our, we have invalidated our treaty because most of our tribal leaders, now don't get romantic and angry with me, have, have taken it up and signed a settlement. You've invalidated the Treaty of Waitangi. You can no longer go there. And you've become corporates. Corporates look after money. They don't look after people. Let's unromanticize ourselves and get real around whether our corporate is looking after us as people. Ask yourself. But I want to tell you this story. This little girl has a story to tell. It's a story when she, that she, when she told it, she wasn't believed. This little girl is six years old. This little girl came back to her mother from Nuhaka to Tauranga. Her story is one of incest. Her mother believed her, but was triggered into her own rape, and she believed that, this little girl believed that she had made her mother weep so bad that she would never again talk to another adult, let alone talk to her mother, the only one who would believe her. I began disconnecting. You wonder when that happened? It was right back at six years old. And how many of the six-year-olds have disconnected? Yet you know. If you want to connect, this is where you've got to connect. It's about you. It's about what mahara, what pain, what hurt, what all of that you, you kept secret inside of you that you haven't connected. Then how can you reconnect others when you yourself need to reconnect? How does that happen, people? If you don't love you, then how do you love others? Because this little girl grew to hate herself. It keeps happening until she's 15 years of age with no help. She decides that it's time to cross the river with to her nan. You see, when my nan died, I went, they wouldn't let me go to her tangi, but I went anyway. They found me when they came home in hospital because I was gone. I had gone to see my nan. I was fighting with her to cross the river. I knew nothing about suicide. People, that word was never in my brain. But what I knew about was crossing the river to my nan, the happiest moment in my life, the happiest times, the most loved times that my nan had left me a song about about, you know, Rimu, about that hour. And every time I, I had decided that I was going to go and know that if I have to go, I have to leave my body somewhere. She begins by trying, to, I begin to try across the river and I do many things. I jump from three-story buildings to try and catch, but my grandmother comes and she catches me. But she's in Wairua. And when I fight with her three, and this is three o'clock in the morning, when the, no one's at the kura, I'm at Church College of New Zealand, and I get up on the David O. McKay building and jump in a high building. No one's there. I go up again and up again, but my nan, by six o'clock in the morning, the workers come to work, they see me arguing, me arguing, but they don't see my nan. Don't ever talk to a psychologist. They stick you in a madhouse. <laughs> again and again, my nan stops me, and the cooks come early in the morning, and guess what? They take me to Tokanui then, mental health, mental institution as a danger to myself. I'm crying with them. I'm lonely. Thank you, Zen. I hurt. I overdose. No one to talk to. Pain. Male hate. I become a prostitute in Wellington, people, because I absolutely, I work for Carmen in Le Bacon, and I practice s and because I want to hurt men so bad for what they did to me as a child. 
I want to hurt them. I want to hate them. Because also at this stage, as they, he raped me and continuously raped me, I, my body betrayed me and had an orgasm, and I believed that I had agreed with that rape. And I hated me. So what was the use of living? I wanted to cross the river so bad. And I couldn't. I lived in a world of bullshit and lies. And my nan always stopped me. My nan always came. And she would not let me cross the river. And guess what? I still, I'm 70 years old today. And I will tell you, I saw my nan, you psychologist. Just because you can't see nothing. <laughs> I lived in a world of LSD, cocaine, and heroin. Yeah, I know all about those. I was still trying to die. And that's what it was. It wasn't even about wanting an addiction in my body. I was trying to die. I went up into the forest that one day in Taumata, in Tauranga Mana, found the Kroa Kuya tree where we took our first moons, laid down and said, Kuro, take me home. I need to cross the river. I lay down, shut up, snorted, and dropped a pad. Hoping that, you know, because no hunters go in this, this forest. But somehow I was in Tauranga Mona Hospital having my gut pumped because some, somebody said that the, 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 the hunters found me. Bullshit. I know it was my mother, my grandma. I, I know categorically she wouldn't let me die. So I walked, you know, not knowing how to heal. World of bullshit and lies and self-hate. And all of those things, I hating myself, wanting to be this big fat bumbalumba, because I stood at the at the, at the lights in Wellington, going to pay Carmen her, her her part of my all night of belting and bashing up men who loved it. And I heard two men in the front of me saying, "Ooh, fancy fucking that!" I looked across where their eyes were going, and it was a bit woman with elephantitis. A Tongan or a Pacific Ocean woman. And I thought, fuck, that's what I've got to do. That's what I've got to do. They're going to leave me alone. I've got to do that. Hence the journey to 250 kgs. Yeah. It was a journey. My heroin and LSD cocaine was a journey. It was a journey to kill and to kill me. It was a journey to die. So don't ever, ever tell me about anything around suicide. Because it wasn't. It was a journey to death, to, to die. It was a loveless journey. I couldn't even love me. I didn't know how to love me. I was hidden within. I was lonely. No one cared. Who cares? Walking zombie, isolated within. No love. Gone when he comes. When he came time after time, I was not there. I was at the river trying to cross it to my nan with no help. The silence screaming inside, I was silenced, my voice was taken away, I was a liar, I was a dirty little girl. Yeah, I was, I was filthy, I wouldn't wash, because I just believed if I was stank so bad, if I didn't do anything with me, then I, they would stay away from me. But if you learn about the politics of sexual abuse, it don't happen that way. They still come. So there's no help. No one believes me anyway. This is my 250. Still trying to die, but my nan always finds me, so I decided that diabetes is the way I will die, and my nan can't stop me. So I began that journey to, to, to diabetes. I sought alternative help, but you know, I got sick of them saying that the, the help, the alternative is, you know, is, is the Rungwa people, the Māori people, the Rurura people, hey, they're the alternatives. We, we, we were here with Tangata Whenua. The colonizers are alternatives, so let's get the label right. You know, I went to social welfare. I was looking for the healer. I was looking for doctors. I went to doctors. I went to psychologists. Oh, you know, I dare not tell them that I'm really close to having a number of personalities because Hene Wirangi has five. She is the five. She has a mother. She has a, she has a, she's a mother. She's a daughter. She's a sister. She's an aunt. She's a grandma. She's a great grandma. You know, and each one of those have different behaviors. Oops, you better not tell that to a psyche. 
And then, then not only that, I'm an artist, I'm a poet, I'm a singer, I'm a carver of who I am. I'm all of those, better not tell and every one of them. I don't behave like a mother with my lover, because you'll tell me where to go. I, but sometimes we mix men folk and women folk, we mix our behavior as a parent. Hey, we mix that as a lover with our children. So we have to think about those behaviors. But I went all over the place to find these counselors, even our tohunga, how romantic is that? You know, they really don't. They just go to say big, huge karaki and you have no idea what it's all meaning. You go to the spiritual healers and neck manage, you go to all the, the, those kinds of people that can, you know, the, the, those ones that take a bits and pieces from everywhere and try to be fabulous. But you know, people, rape is about this. If you want to heal me, then look at this framework. Because what I had to do was walk back into my being to find the frameworks in which I needed to heal. Heal my tribal peoples. Where were you, tribal peoples? Where were you when I was six years old? Ask yourself. Heal my child. Heal my hiningaro. Heal the mind. The mind is a huge place, and we know the whakapapa kairotoinga te ao Māori, the whakapapa of hine kori kori ko marries tama i ngaro. They have twins. Hine is the girl, ngaro is the tāne. And which of those do you think is the emotional people? Tell me in a loud voice, who's emotional? Yeah, see, not too loud, are you? You know why, Tani, you're the emotions. Wahine, of course, you're ngaro. Ko ngaro ke. Hey, and that's okay. But I'm not talking to you separately. I'm talking to tene taha he taha maui he taha wahine. Tene taha he taha matau. Na tani, na wahine me nga tani kei roto iau. You know, inside of us we carry both in te ao Māori. So it, you know, we have a reo that says ko iaia 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 him her him her him her him her him her. We don't have separate reo. So look and decolonize your reo and understand that I'm talking not about male and female separately, but I'm talking about that kei roto iau inside of me. And how well balanced is my hine and my ngaro. Heal that because it's warped at this time. It just wants to die. Heal my child. And you have to go through each one of these frameworks to work on how to heal me. Heal my child. How are you going to heal my child? You have to walk that child and tell that child and walk me back into that space. You know, some of us use psychodrama. Some of us use all sorts of things, but a string my soul back to being. You have to heal my child. You have to heal my woman. The woman is so in me, this couldn't be stopped. I hated me, this woman. I hated being born at that time. You have to heal. So you've got a huge framework in which to work with. You have to heal my whānau. I don't live alone. If you work with me, you're working with my whānau, my whānui, na tūpuna, na atua. And can you work with that? I'm not an individual. Decolonize that, people, and take me back to my whānau, and let's heal us together. You have to heal my whānau. You have to heal my mothers, because I lost my mother. I lost my mother in a pain that she just could not cope with. And I didn't know that till much later. And I didn't have time to tell her, Ma, I love you. So I went up to her gravesite and said, on the island and said, Mum, oh, I celebrate your birthing day of me every December 10. This idea of birthday is not our rituals. Rape of my traditions. You have to heal that, the rape of my stories. I have to be able to talk my story and be believed. Well, at the moment, I don't give a shit whether you believe me or not because this is the way my life is. <laughs> rape of my voice, yeah? I don't need your validation, I validate me. 
rape of my inability to give birth. I gave birth to four ch three children and lost two at stillborn. I killed them in me because my cervix wouldn't move because I was raped at sex and damaged. So you see, I come from that space of not even being able to. So when I sing the song, I know what that queer was going to when she wrote it. And here's you men that get up there and go, he tangata, he tangata, he tangata. It's a tangi, it's a way of tangi. We don't even sing it properly. And it's about a woman who cannot give birth and her soul white right to be able to give birth, and it was mine. I could not give birth naturally. And it was my right and it was taken. I gave birth to one son through cesarean section. I had to go into hospital when I was two months pregnant if they wanted to abort him. But my mother wouldn't allow it. So I was in two, two and a half months pregnant on my back till they could take this child out of my body. And do you know what that feels like? I cry as a wahine that could never get birth. So that's why I steal everybody else's kids. <laughs> it's a rape of my wairua. And let's, just, 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 let's decolonize the word wairua. You know, all you hahi people, wairua doesn't mean spirituality in my voice. Why? Water, rua, twin. Two. Twin waters. And doesn't that talk about duality? That doesn't that talk about me coming into balance between my male female? And you with your male female? Don't half of you people think you you know, you get into this buddy real amazing thing. I'm not a woman. Well, yeah, you are. Hey. See, you've got a framework. How to heal. I had to go back to this framework because there was no one that can heal. I finally found the healer. I finally found the healer. After going everywhere to find one, you know, all of those people that I went to ask for help, that tried to tell me what to do, not one of them ever asked me what I'd like to happen for me. Not one. Do you? Or is it the client? You tell them what your training has done. You tell them all your psychos and, seek, you know, whatever, what you've done. But did you ever think to ask them inside, because I think I'm only a door opener now. I'm only a door opener. I open the door to the soul and sing their soul, throw a few tools, step aside, and allow the healer to emerge and stand with that person until they can heal themselves. We're not the healers. And when we start to label ourselves, when somebody tells me that I heal, I'm going, oh, really? Yeah, well, okay, whatever. So it's about that. This is my turning point. See my son, Libra, that, that one with the little girl, Pinky? Look at him, stoned out of his brain. I can't even, today, today he had suffered thro totally through methamphetamine, through all of the drugs, and I still have to watch that son. He is 45 years old, but do you know where he got that from? It was him who said, I loved him. He was the only little thing that I absolutely loved and adored. The only time that this little boy, he was my turning point. He was that one in Caesarean section. His name is Libra Tane Nuiya Rangi Kohu. And he was, in, he was my beginning of my reconnecting. No great knowledge, no great healing, no nothing. I loved for the first time a little man asked nothing of me except to love him. But one day, this little man said to me, Mama, I don't love you when you fly apart. When you fly away, I was still using people. And I realized that for this, this, I would lose this young man. There's a huge, huge story about the nurse, the district nurse in Nuhaka taking over. I went to see her and begged her to help me. She stripped my room. I had to go cold turkey, people. She's, and I have been 30 years, 45 years, no, 30 years clean. 30 years. I went to Hamner Springs to deal with it. The, 12, oh man, the 12 what steps, I, you know, I kind of, me and Monica Stockdale down there, she was, I, went, I had to go and do the 12 step with a priest, and I went to the priest, and he was Monica's husband, I said, I don't want to talk to you, I want to talk to a Maori, 
So he goes away, brings back his huaranga tira. Monica Stockdale and I hid in Hamner Springs to start the Māori program down there. And of course, you know, the doctors down there told me I was supposed to be there for me. But I know that I can't heal me if I don't heal, help heal others. If I don't help heal my whānau, I cannot be healed. A, because I'm asking you in a framework to help me heal my whānau. Help me heal my traditional peoples. Help me heal our men folk, our women folk, our children, our kaumatua. Our kaumatua, the great, the beautiful people who, hold, who are supposedly holding the suppository of the sacred knowledge, but they don't anymore. Because where do we put them? In old people's houses. We don't surround them and love them and let them take our babies and teach them the beautiful things of their own culture. Less the hahi, oh, you know, I've got to shut up about that one. <laughs> but here's what I needed, people. This is what I found that I needed to heal. What do I need? I needed to find my heart, my soul, my life, my want to live, my whare tangata. I needed to heal the whare tangata. I will talk to you about it on Saturday and how that I healed and worked with that. I needed my music. I needed my song to sing. My nan left me a song that will help me forever and help me through this life. And every time he came, I would say, yes, nan, I'm singing my song again. And it was this song. How do my joe sing? Josephine is my tawira that walks at my side to learn. Ask yourself, leaders, who walks with you? about, she would say, Nan would say to me today, Nan would say, you have to learn to dance the dance of love, my darling, because like the Rimu, if you don't dance, no matter the face of the ocean, the ocean will pull you out, chuck you on the, uh, the, on the sand, and the nami namis will eat you up, and you are going to be one of those kids, I'm afraid. So I know the legacy of my song, and I began to sing my soul back into being. What little child has a song to sing? That little girl was given her song. And I know that if we're to heal, we're to heal the song deep in the soul to remove all the paru. The paru needs to be taken from this woman. And so I, I needed my music. I needed to sing. And here's my music here. In the front of you people is the tonga pu'oro. The tonga pu'oro wahine ma, are the, we are the kaituyaku. We kaitiaki na music of na Māori, of te ao Māori, the taonga pūro come in three sets. Why am I, why are we kaitiaki? Because the stories in the pūrāko of the taonga pūro are about Hine Raukatauru, the goddess of all flute music. They are also about Hine Pū Te Hue. Those of you that were in the Māori caucus saw me carrying a, carving a hue. I'm a carver, I break all of those rules. I know I'm in Te Arawa, so I better be careful. I, <laughs> Um, I break all of those rules. I'm not kahunga ni te arawa, and I'm wrong on my wahine, so get that one. Um, and I also come from Ngati Pura. You remember the auntie up there that stands on the pole? Mm, that's me. So <laughs> it is all of those. The, 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 and the third one is Hine Moana, the goddess of the, the ocean itself. I'm sick of those fellas. They say, oh, the ocean is tangoro. No, it's not. The Puraka will tell you 
You've got cocoa. You remember the old way, the old reel? This is Daryl Māori Week. Find out. The old reel says when the kids used to say, the nannies used to say, Haere koe ki te cocoa. They didn't say, Haere koe ki te horoi. That's modern. Have a look at it, decolonizing our reel. It's bloody terrible. But anyway, we didn't write that song. That's another story. Um, <laughs> and so these are my tongues. So Hine Mona had three husbands. Woo-hoo. Three of them. Coco in the safe waters where the children would swim. Tangaroa from there to the horizon. And Te Mona Nuiakiwa from the horizon thereafter in the, in the Polynesian oceans. A3. So there you go. So in these, you're more than welcome to come and, and listen to the voice, and I'll play some of them at the end of the voice, but these are still actually my soul and my song to sing. Because they have voices. The pukaya doesn't, doesn't, you know, you can't use, or they sound like, they got a voice. The pukaya says, drop what you're running, what you're doing, and run for your life. It was the way that our tupuna stood on the corners of the turrets of their whare and blew it when they saw, you know, enemy coming. So they blew the pukaya. They didn't play it willy-nilly. And the people knew and knew the voices that said, run for your life. They knew where to run. Eh? The, the putorino says, you know, that's that one. The putorino says, oh, I don't know who's coming, but, you know, they look all right. And the kōwawa plays, when the kōwawa, like two tānakai and hine mō, the, the, the kōwawa, when the kōwawa plays, you've got to cross your legs. Eh? Because it's aimed at you, if it's aimed at you, how wonderful. Um, but there's lot, they have voices, people. They have voices that, that, that are so beautiful. And that's the music of the soul for us. And if you don't know that music, you better learn. If you don't know these stories, learn Māori. Those are the things that will sing our rangatahi out of, of suicide. Those are the things that will talk. Us old people need to tell them that. You know, and I'm going to tell them that too. I needed my migration stories. I needed to know what waka I belonged to. And I belonged to Kura Hopo for my wine. I belonged to Te Waka Tapu or Taki Pimu. Hello. Hey. But I can connect to Tjerawa, and I can connect to Tjerawa through Rongomai Wahine, and Kahungunu gave birth to Rongomai Papa, who married to Haurangi. Ara, I can do that. I can connect. When we're talking about connection, are we connecting there? Where are we connecting? Come on. We're connecting way down here somewhere. Hey, when we should be way back there connecting that. I can connect it to, 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 um, to Ngai Tuhoi. Oh, those beautiful Patu Paihere people. I, I can, I'm a kohu from over that side. Hey, you know, my, my queer married Rua Kenana, now a pair of black. Where? I can connect to those ones. How many waka do you connect to? I connect to Kura Hopo through Rongo Mai Wahine. Hey, she was the daughter of Poor Poto. So you've got to know those connections. People, I needed to know those stories. Who was I? I needed to know my pepeha, the stories of my pepeha. And my whai kōrero, by the way. I've got nine components. You men, you missed the point with your whai kōrero. You know why? And I tell you why, because it's the greatest, greatest model of practice for healing. It has nine components. One component is, two, is the, right at the beginning. Nine components, the beginning of the tau parapara. Te whakatau o koutou para, kei roto i a koutou. Ara, huena, and that's a big key model of practice for healing our people, right there. The second is, mihi ki te atua for some of you, and mihi ki ngā atua for some of us, right? But they have to have the two of them. So what you're looking at is, kei whia, te, te atua kei roto i a koutou. Hey, I'm an atua wahine in being prepared. Hey. Then the next one is mihi ki ngā mate. It's not just mate, the dead, you learn to do that, but your mate, that, that kei roto i akwe, the mate you carry. Hey, mihi ki ngā mate you carry. Then I have to fix you fellas up around the ikura that you call mate in the wahine. See, there's lots of healing programs. Kei roto i te whai kōrero, have a real good look at it. Because you, it's just what our tupuna left us, not just for our men folk, but as a healing model of practice. Try it. I needed my chika, my pono, I needed my manake, I needed my pepeha, I needed aroha. But I'm not talking about love, people. I'm not talking aroha, love. I'm talking aro means, aro means my deeper thoughts. 
Kha means my sacred breath. I need to put back my sacred breath, te roto yai. I'm not talking about love, but I don't even know where that word came from. I needed my tribal stories. I needed my customs, my tikanga, my kawa. I needed my pohiri back into my being. I needed to call me. I needed my kaikaranga kairoto yau to call me back into life. I don't need this other stuff. I went there trying to find it. They locked me up and see, they might be locking me up now too, by the way. Um, <laughs> I needed to know the importance of my purako, of my of my pakiwaitara, I need to know to tell the stories to my babies so they never, ever have to go. I needed my own story. And guess what? I needed my ori ori. The ori ori is given to me when I should have got it when I was born. And in that, but no, no, we basically go and study the, the ori ori or two, 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 somebody else. Hey, we ha hey, did you give your babies their ori ori when they were born as their gift? Did you play the, pukai, the putahatara to welcome that out of the water, out of the ocean? Did you bring the putahatara to welcome them into the world? Did you karanga atsu or did you just leave them in a the maternity hospital and say, breathe and kick and push, hurry up? What did you do? And you want to reconnect? You're so disconnecting right there because you don't give those babies that opportunity. Give me it back. I want my waiata. I went to look me in Hemna. Well, they just about told me to go home anyway. But I did. And into my life came these beautiful people, and I began to write my pain out of myself. I'm a poet, and these are some of the stories that I wrote and told. Um, I began to do um, carve hue. These are my hue that I'd carved. And also make masks, the masks that would tell me the many faces of pain and hurt, and I could take them out of me and place them on these beautiful things. I needed my art. I needed to play Tonga Pūoro. I began to play the music of my ancestors and understood the voice within. I understood my own voice and heard the voice of my tūpuna. And in earnest, I began to sing my soul back into being. See, there's Pākehā snails in these things. I'm not being racist because, see, see there's, a, there's a Māori snail over there. Hey, the imported Pākehā snails you'll find in this thing because they too. Come over here, Tuari. Can you pass me a Pākehā snail? <laughs> over there. In that little front box. See that? In the front one. No, the front one. No, the, look at the snail in the front one. That one you were in. Yeah. <laughs> there, that's that not a snail. The other one, Tuari. <laughs> there, there, there you go. Hey, because you see, in Tonga Pūr or anything with a hole in it, you can play. Oh, don't be, you know, this is a hole in it, this is a snail. See, look, little Pākehā one. I, I, I dyed one the other day just to make it white. <laughs> we have all of these beautiful Tonga in the front of us, and these are the things that could sing the soul back into being. Hey, you want to have a try and play. But I would like to give you that time over lunch and, and, and let us stay up for a while. Now, the only thing that you have to do is make sure you put it back in the right place. <laughs> I, so just, buddy, look, no, it's be surprising where the pukai is. You see the hole where the pukai goes? It's over there somewhere. <laughs> I, oh, hello. Okay. But I learned well in the Tonga Pūoro. I learned um, so much. This man taught me how to love how to be loved, and he taught me without being sexual for 30 years, because I couldn't, because I was so damaged, I was so hurt, and I couldn't sexually look at him. But he was my handsome honey, and he, he died two years ago. But I still loved, loved him. But you know, some of the things that we really have to look at is what was in place before the 1800s. Look at this. I'm not going to go through each one of them. You know what was in place. All of this. And then when in the 18, when the Treaty of Waitangi came, there was money. There was, it changed drastically, hugely. Our people died from Pākehā diseases. We were colonised. They stole our land. 66.5 million acres. By In two years, we had 22, 22 million acres left because it was stolen from us. By now, 
in this 2018, we have about 13% of that of our whole thing with the cows, the sheep, the horses, all of those greedy bastards got the land, eh? So that they could they could build on it. And what? Then they feed it to us unhealthily. Look at all those cows, they've got a disease over here. Hello. And we still I don't eat red meat, so thank goodness for that. Um but we have a look at, at, at colonization and the impact on our people. We need to walk back there, folks. We need to walk back there and have a look at the settlements, the settlement of Aotearoa, who came, Abel, Abel Johnson, Tass. We have to study that. We have to see what happened to our people, to know what happened to us. The impact, I work in Waikiria prison. It is 59% of the prison's population of Māori men. Māori women are 67. She's 60, she's 67. Up in Wiri prison. Why? When we are only 15% of the population of this country of 4.5 million people, why is it that the indigenous peoples of this country is locked down like that? Ask yourself, it is illegal and it's immoral. But we've got to get off our butt and start fighting at all aspects. We can't just sit on our butt and say that. Then we have to learn about the whole kaupapa of whānau. Look, being surrounded by all these, these are all my more women, well, some of them. Hey, so I want you to learn that. My father, my, this is my father here, my mum and dad are around by the flag. This is my house truck. In 1985, we walked the roads to Waitangi as a family, as a tribal peoples, to learn what we had to learn about colonization and an impact. And where what we learned was incredibly hard. I also know that as I began to heal, there was a saboteur inside that started to stop me from doing all of these things and I wrote this piece of work. And you can read it for yourself as it's going through. <clears throat> you want to heal me? then let me tell you how I need to be healed. Don't tell me all your rubbish. But I did love yours, Johan. I love the way you talked about that. That's beautiful. I need you to help me to live, to become my saviour, not my saboteur. I need you, my saboteur, to leave. I promise to love you. I promise to give you the respect. I promise that I never want to do that again. I promise to live. We both know, though, I weep for you, but you must cross that river alone. So I crossed my own river. Kotiro he moko puna kwe na hine titama Wai wai yana na karu titiro hangatu ki te tama he fakatonya io no tu a fakare te mana. O te tane o te wahine Ti akina, ti akina mai Kia o kore ai, e ngoi kore Pāpuritia, puritia mai Kia kore ai, e ngoi meha, whāngai tia, he me meti haere. Wahine, koto mana he waka kawe uri, karanga amae. Oho ana te awai rua, pupu of te toa roha, e, he puna rui mata koe, he mata puna o te tangata, puna o te mata uranga. 
mana o wahine mana o wahine mana o wahine te mana wahine i began to tell my story in waiata and in drama i began to look for the healing processes for me and this is what i found creative storytelling to be able to use the rongoa of my people. I grow a forest at the back of my Kura Eka Whare in Dinsdale in the middle of Hamilton, and I grow every tree. They grow Cody, I grow huge, they're 10 feet, over 10 feet tall now. And I grow, I want to live with my rongoa, because where are you going to go and see? Let's not be romantic. Making our books, writing our own stories, rako carving, writing your stories, telling your own story. Don't let anybody, and learn to love you. Learn to love your whare tangata. Be creative. The creative arts will tell you. Wahine toa, healing methods and practices. I know what those are for me. And I know there will be many other people that know what they are for them too. And I know if I opened your door to your healer today, you know what you're going to do. I began to forgive me. See this man? This is my papa. He taught me about the four doors of the voice. See, you got this door. The first door is the door of the krua and the queer. That first door. My father was Anarukuhu. And he taught, he was a rich baritone. He went through the war in Tripoli and he comes back singing romantic songs to my mother. And he would stand there and he goes, Bono no te mi amor. And my mother would say, shut up, Anaru. And then we would say, come here, Papa, and sing to us. But he was a rich baritone. He was a muso. That's his band up there. They were called the bebop, and they played that music. They were da 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 And we were kids outside dancing away to my father's music. He was a saxophonist, and he could play every instrument. The bands in those days could play every instrument, musos, every and they were amazing. They would stop to the honky tonk and they'd come over and play the alto, the tenor, the, tenor, the saxophones, all the music. So I, he taught me that this is a kroa. The kroa is placed in your body and your puku. You know that? In your puku, you're going. And then you hear the kroa, he slows down. He's beautiful. Slows down. He's like, oh, hey. And he breathes slow. And he goes, boo. That's him. He's beautiful. Unlike the Rangatai, he goes, hey. <laughs> The door of that is so different. And so when I'm teaching Fai Kōrero, don't get upset, men. I teach Fai Kōrero in, in, in Waikiri, because we'll keep it Don't you tell me that. At least they go with a, with a beautiful format. And so the queer also makes her run across the floor. Aye. The second door, of course, is that door of the rangatai where you're in love and you want to try it's over here, the manoa. I'm in love, I'm closing my eyes so I can see my honey knocking. <laughs> You know, that's sort of in love. But you get the naughty queer at the other end. Uh, they still rangata. You're only, ranga, you're only queer until they say, te na kwe, kwe. <gasps> You're talking to me? Oh, shit, have I reached that place? I, but those naughty queer, you know, I had plenty naughty queer. And they come up and they teach me. They, they would do, they tie that thing around their waist and they go, he mura mura. Oh. They go in the front of the handsomest men and go, he mura mura. Oh, man. That used to so embarrass me. And what about this other one? They would sing, The strings on your demo demos like a banjo. Pua kume kwe, karongo kwe, twang, twang, twang. And then I just go fishing with my nanny Teti down the road, and she would say, Stop here, baby, stop here. Stop here in the front of this party, and she would go, Ke te ata morena e katangi mai. Te hei hei e, e tama maranga maeta mua maua. And out would run my uncle. I'm going, 
and I'm only little. I'm going to tell on you, uncle. I'm going to tell on you. And do you know, I was a hated kid in the, in the, whole, in the whole of our Papakaina, but nonetheless, I did tell on him. And so that was cool. The third house really is the third door, is the door of the kaki, is the door to the throat, is the door of lullaby. And the fourth door is the door of karanga, so that you're hitting the top of your head. I want to leave it there right now because that's my time. And I want to say thank you, but if you want to heal me, look into your soul to heal you first. Tēnā koutou, mihi atu te